Hey YouTube, it's Chris K2CJB with K2CJB Radio. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to build a dipole, uh, specifically a fan dipole, which is essentially two dipoles with a common feed point. That's it. I'm going to do it for 12 and 17 meters. I don't have an antenna specifically for those bands. I have an off-center fed dipole that kind of tunes up on them. But I've always had this thought of, of having something dedicated just for those two bands. I've built dipoles many times in the past and they're very easy to make. So uh, if you've never done one before, you may want to stay tuned to see how, at least how I'm putting this one together. Um, but it is a, a fundamental antenna that we use in ham radio. Dipoles are, they're balanced antennas. Um, there's little to no RF coming back down on the shield if you build it the right way. It's pretty broad banded, uh, so it, it'll work pretty much in the band that you cut it for. Cutting it to the right length, that's the key. And I'll show you how I've been doing it for years, and I've always had good luck with that. So first, let's look at the components that are gonna go into making this antenna. First thing we'll take a look at is the common point of the antenna. The two legs of the antenna would connect here. Uh, there's an incorporated one-to-one uh, -one ballon inside, and there is an SO239, making it easier to, to connect everything together. In the old days, I would just solder the, the coax onto each leg, wrap a couple of loops around the center egg insulator and that was sort of the matching unit <laughs> uh, but uh, now we're doing it this way so I'm using this device today antenna wire um, I know a lot of people would prefer to have a, a jacket over it but uh, you know I just was online and I bought this um, I used bare wire in the past and, and with those dipoles I built many years ago and they served me well for many years so I'm really not too worried about that but anyway here we go antenna wire Egg insulators. You need these for each end of the dipole. And I'll show you on a little sketch on how this is all going to go together. But you need one of these on each end. A little roll of antenna rope to hold the antenna up in the air. And finally, a hunk of coax. Got to be able to get it into the shack. I believe this should be long enough. I'll put the connectors on it and then we'll run the antenna up and see how it looks. And lastly, since this is a fan dipole, I have to keep the elements of each dipole separate from each other. So my thought was, I've seen people use PVC. I had some of this laying around. This is just PEX plumbing. And um, it seems pretty rigid. I'll drill a couple of holes on each end. And um, this will be used, you'll see in the diagram, to keep the ends of the shorter radials of the shorter dipole separate from the radials of the longer dipole. Let's talk about the basic design of this antenna. Starts off with the common feed point with the ballon in it. The coax will come down from there into the shack. The 17 meter dipole, which will be longer, those radials will come out like so. It's cut to the same length and we'll go over how we calculate that. And then get into later on each end. And then antenna rope to support it. The second dipole, the 12 meter dipole, will come out like so. And then that piece of PEX will go here and here. This is the common feed point for each. And these are also cut to length. This I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to keep that wire in there. I'm thinking of simply just making a knot in it. If I drill the hole small enough, that could work. Um, we'll come up with something. Obviously, this wire will get wrapped around the egg insulator on each end. Now we have to do some mathematics to calculate the length of the antenna and the length of the elements. I've always done this the old school way. You know, back in the day when I studied and got my license, the, the dipole formula was really easy to remember. is 468 over F. 468 over F. And what that formula gave you is the overall length of the dipole for a given frequency. That's the overall length. For each element, you have to divide that by two. So the easier way to do that is just use 234 over F. 234 over F, and that will give you the length of each element of a dipole in feet. Now you have to do some calculations after that because um, say your calculation is out to 13.5 feet, you have to convert that to 13 feet six inches so you can measure it. But that's the way I'm going to go with it. I've used that formula for years, and it has always worked. It's never failed me. So let's do a little bit of calculations here and find the frequencies we want to operate in. We're all familiar with this chart, right? So what we're going to look at is 12 and 17 meters. I typically cut my dipoles to operate 
right smack in the middle of the band. So fortunately, these bands are really not that big, right? A, a hundred kilohertz for each band. So 17 meters is 18.068 to 18.168 megahertz. So that comes out to the center of that is 18.118. And the 12 meter band is 24.89 to 24.99. So the center of that would be 24.94. I don't want to bore you with doing the math. So the 17 meter dipole elements are 12.92 feet or 12 feet 11 inches. And the 12 meter elements are 9.38 feet or 9 feet 4 and a half inches. Now that we know the dimensions, we can go ahead and cut the wire. But before we cut the wire, we have to take into account a few extra things. One is the wire that it takes to wrap around the egg insulator on the end, you have to add that wire to the calculation because it folds back and gets soldered onto the antenna wire. So that doesn't count in the overall length. So you want to add that. Same holds true in the center of the antenna. You want to give yourself a little bit extra in there to make sure that, it, that you, you can make the connections. And, and again, that's not entirely part of the calculation on the length of the wire. What I like to do with this is give myself an extra six to eight inches on each radial. That way I can fold it back. I may have to adjust it you know, when you set it up. But again, I've had great luck with this formula. I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating that I'll cut it and it'll work. <laughs> But of course, we'll find that out after we put it together. So let's go cut the wire. We'll add six or eight inches to each leg and see what happens. The way I plan to walk each one of these out to measure them, is I'm gonna take this about six or eight inches or so, and I'm gonna put it in my bench vise. And I'm also going to take my tape measure, and I'm just gonna clamp them together here. Yeah, I know, not the prettiest way to do it. But now I can walk this out and measure it. 12 foot 11. Let's cut the rest. Nine foot four and a half. I have one end of the long radial and one end of the shorter radial. We're going to connect them together at the center point of the dipole. The center ballon has lugs that came with it, and I'm going to use those lugs and just put both wires into the lug like so, and then we will crimp them first and we will solder them also. Nice, nice and tight. Beautiful. Now let's start some assembly of the dipole in the center section. We'll put the first radial assembly here, and I'm gonna to have to improvise something here. I wanna do a little bit of strain relief. I don't really wanna have it hanging like that with all the tension right on that connection. I wouldn't mind trying to get a little bit of that off there, so I'm just gonna maybe zip tie it in one of those holes. I think that'll work. <laughs> we'll find that out. That's what Hamrido is about. We experiment and we learn, right? So anyway, the lug is on. I'm gonna put a lock washer on. And then we'll put the nut on. And then we'll use the nut driver and snug it up. Now let's do the same for the other one. Well, here's the finished product of the center. Both radials on each side, crimped and soldered with lock washers holding everything in place. A couple of zip ties on each side. Things feel pretty firm. I think we're going to be okay. The next thing is to route this PEX which is gonna serve as a spacer and figure out how we're gonna get it to stay in place on the shorter 12 meter radial. Sometimes it's the simplest solutions that are the most elegant. 
and I remembered that I cut the radials about six inches longer than I needed, so I just wrapped it around the spacer and back on itself. So this is the shorter element, and it's, uh, it's held pretty good. And here's where the longer one passes through. The ceramic egg insulator works exactly the same way. Just take the insulator, run the wire through it, a couple inches through, wrap it around, and give it a twist. I'm not going to solder it yet because I may have to make some adjustments to this antenna. There's one. Let's do the other one. Let's take this mess outside, unravel it, and see what we have. I strung the antenna up just to uh, get things unraveled. Note to self, using this kind of wire, I should have known better. It really is like working with a slinky sometimes, but I got it all apart. Now, the first thing I noticed was that the bottom antenna was very loose. Uh, because, of course, the PEX line is not very rigid, rigidly in place on the supporting wire. So what I did was I added a little bit of the antenna cord to just put a little bit of tension on the bottom radial. Now, I see it wants to roll over if it's too tight, but I think with the coax cable hanging in the center, that should hold things pretty sturdy. So next thing is to put the coax on it and then string it up a little higher. I have a, a line in a tree that I was going to use for this anyway. And pull it up and see, see how we're looking right now. You can hear the leaf blowers going in the background because it's that time of year here in Connecticut. But let's just take a look. I've got it strung up into that tree. You can sort of see the pecs right there. It's strung up into that tree. I think I'm going to move it because it's pretty... <clears throat> far out of far away from the house. I want it a little bit closer. But there's the center with the coax attached and I still have this end down over here tied off onto the railings. So I want to just do a quick test, see where we're at, see how the antenna is performing. Let's take a look. The first band I want to look at is 17 meters. So that was centered on 18 118. So let's take a look at that first. We'll enter the frequency here first, 18 118. And now for the range, oh boy. Uh, zero, zero, yeah, 250 will be fine. Okay, now let's scan the SWR and hit OK and see what we get. Oh, there you go. 1.5 to 1, pretty much across the band. Now that's in a very compromised sloper sort of configuration. Um, I'm quite happy with that. Now let's check 12 meters. Put in the frequency. 24, 9, 4, 0 is what we cut it to. SWR, check. Oh, okay, now you'll notice we've got a very high SWR for some reason on the 12 meter band. Now, I know the measurements are correct. I've double checked those. So the element is, the elements are right. I'm not too sure what's causing this. Let's just see where it is resonant. Let's do that first. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to stay with the same center frequency. I want to change the range and make it, um, let's make it uh, 2 megahertz wide. Okay, now we'll sweep the SWR and see if it's, which way it's resonant, if it's resonant. Okay, we're not seeing anything there either, no change. So let's go uh, make the range a little wider. This will be two and a half megahertz each side. Now let's see what we get. Uh huh. Okay, we, we are resonant somewhere. Let's get an idea. So, and it's resonant. It's resonant much higher than the band I cut it for. It's resonant at uh, roughly 26. So it's about 2 megahertz high is where it's resonant. So that means we need to make the antenna longer. Oh boy. Well, let's see what happens. There we are now. We've got this resonant in the 12 meter band. And I will, let me just walk you through what I had to do to fix this. The issue was that even though I added an extra six inches to each of the legs, um, it wasn't enough. I actually needed a little more <laughs> to, to make the antenna resonant. Well, here's the problem. 
how do you make a wire longer, <laughs> right? Um, and you're probably thinking, well, Chris, you've already got the antenna. You haven't put it up yet, so why not just reassemble it at the other end? Well, the problem is, is that when I made my connections into the tree, the far end that the antenna is going to go up in, <laughs> to redo that is going to be a real hassle with the, with the antenna rope and all that. But there is another way to do it. This is known as the Western Union splice or the lineman splice. And what it's done, what you do is you take an extra piece of wire and you do this double twist sort of thing. The splice is here, but you twist the wires over each end. And now you've got a, you've got a splice that's gonna hold. Western Union come up with this. So this has been around a long time. What I'm gonna do is grab a soldering gun, throw some solder on that just to hold it together. And um, I think this antenna is ready to go up. Well, there it is and all its simplistic glory. <laughs> It's tied off in a tree right over there. I don't want to make it dizzy. I'm going to take it back slowly. <laughs> and up here, it's tied off on the tripod. If I zoom in, you won't see it. It's a black line, so it's really hard to see. But it's tied off on the tripod, and cables run over the side of the house. I connected it to the panel I made in the window that passes into where the shack is. So let's go in and see how she works. Kilo 2, Charlie, Juliet, Bravo. K2, CJB, your 5-9 or 59. I'm in, I'm mobile in Cherokee, North Carolina. QRZ. Roger, Roger, I copy you being mobile in, uh, in North Carolina. You're, uh, you're a solid 5-7, five, 5-8 five, into uh, Connecticut, just outside of Hartford. QSL. Thank you very much for the 5-7, five, 5-8 five, uh, in Connecticut. Have a good day. Five. Kilo Zero, November, Shiloh, India, calling QQQD. The QQDX on 12 meters, Mike Zero, and SI calling David X, Ray, over. Kilo Two, Charlie, Juliet, Bravo. Uh, kilo Two, Charlie, Juliet, uh, Bravo, thanks for the call. Um, Chris, David, Brian, over. Roger, Roger, Brian. Now uh, you have beautiful signal here, 5758. Five, it's doing just fine. I'm just testing out a new fan dipole that I built and put up, and you're the first contact on this band. Yeah, that's right. I always like your band, mate. It's great, isn't it? And uh, I said, let's get on 12. I think I left it a little bit late, mate, but uh, nevertheless, I'll, I'll get you confirmed up on QR7 local for the world, Chris. So have a good weekend, mate, and we'll catch you later, really. You too. Thanks so much, and uh, 73. Yeah, cheers, mate. I'll keep it short because the band's uh, a little bit unstable, <laughs> but uh, thanks for the new one. Mike Zero, November, Sierra, India. Well, the first contact was at, on uh, 17 meters, and the second contact was on 12 meters, and um, the antenna worked fine. I did see the SWR was still a little high, actually. I was surprised on uh, 17 meters. Uh, that, that's kind of confusing to me, so I may have to go tinker around with it a little bit more um, to get it to tune a little better. Actually, I could probably just run it through the tuner, and it'll be fine, but a dipole, you really shouldn't have to do that. It's a resonant antenna. I'm pleased it works. So these are two bands I don't usually operate because I really don't have an antenna for it, so now I do. A couple of things I learned out of this was the way the two dipoles really do interact with each other. You know, they're, they're slightly on an angle from each other, and but there's that proximity effect. So, you know, that's something that you learn when you experiment with things like this. And I'm sure that when I readjusted the, uh, the, the 12 meter legs, I'm sure it had some sort of effect on the uh, 17 meter legs. And of course, getting it further up off the ground made a difference. So, you know, I mean, I could go back and forth, you know, to kingdom come to get the thing really perfect, but I think it's it's working fine. I'm really not going to get too worried about it. It was a fun project to build and, uh, you know, running up and down on a roof, getting things hooked up. It was good. While I was up there, actually, uh, something you should do if you're up on your roof for any reason, check everything else while you're up there. I noticed that my off-center fed uh, dipole has stretched a little bit <laughs> and I just pulled that up tight. I just redid the line for that and tightened it up a little bit. Made sure all my connections up there were tight and snug. So it's always good to do some preventive maintenance while you're up on the roof. You don't want to go up there all the time if you can help it. So anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, 
if you want to make any comments, if you built an antenna like this before and you saw something I did like terribly wrong, <laughs> feel free to leave a comment below. I'm not going to be offended. In fact, it, it's, this is how we learn, right? Also, if you give me a like, if you like the video, and if you would consider subscribing, that would be great. Helps the YouTube algorithm, helps us YouTubers to just kind of keep uh, making more content for everybody. Until next time, 73 from K2CJB.